Hey everyone, thank you for checking out another video. This tutorial is going to be the first part in a short series where we kind of build up to this hex map generator that I worked on a little while back. I want to start with the very basics and show you how to create the hex grid and then we're going to work up through using noise to create the elevation and then eventually I'll show you how to make a JavaScript version similar to what you see here uh, and where you can customize things and, and other people can come to the the URL and they can mess around with it as well. For right now, I want to start with this Python processing version, which is kind of how I started with the hex map work. I've got some code in place and it's extremely simple right now. And really all it is to high level is it's drawing a grid. So we have we have the width and height of the image, grid X pixels, grid Y pixels. That's the actual size of the kind of the canvas within the canvas that we'll be drawing on. The sep x and sep y is the separation between what we're drawing. So I'll go ahead and run this. You'll see it's just a grid of circles right now. Grid x and grid y, this is the number of rows and columns based on the sep x and this. So you can see how it kind of divides it out. We've got this draw hexagon function, but that's just drawing a circle right now, which are these circles that you see. We're going to replace those with hexagons in just a minute some other boilerplate stuff that we've set up in the setup function, stroke weight, stroke, no fill. Uh, this is the, the logic kind of behind drawing the grid. You define current X, current Y, kind of in the top left corner, and then uh, you step through whatever you've defined the grid Y and grid X as, you step through that at every time you draw uh, whatever it is you're drawing, and then you increment your current X and then after that loop, you increment current X and current Y. So there are a few changes we have to make based on the fact that we're drawing a hexagon. The first thing that we want to do is define the hexagon size. So we'll say hex size equals, let's just start with 10. And then now that we have the hex size, we can send it in through here instead of just a hard-coded value of 10. So I'm going to run this again. Same thing, we just replace the 10 with a variable hex size. We're going to use that size in other places. So if I just go ahead and, let's go ahead and replace the circle. We'll replace this circle. And I'll put, I'll put all this code into a repository so that you can pull it down. In processing, we have this function called begin shape and then end shape. The idea is that between these two calls, we can, uh, we can add vertices. And then when we call close or if you call close, the, the vertices that we add, we're drawing lines between them, and then it'll close to form a shape. So we're just forming a shape that's kind of custom instead of using something like rect or circle. So we're going to add several vertices. And I'm using a reference to make sure I get the math right, but we're just adding two points, and we have to work through some math of what the, the points look like for a hexagon. So pi divided by 2, x plus side times sine, pi divided by 2. So that's the x value. And then the y value plus side times cosine, pi divided by 2. I think that's good for one vertice, vertex, <laughs> vertice. So we'll add, we need... Well, the definition of a hexagon is that it has six sides, so we need six vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then they just differ a little bit between them. So divided by six, uh, divide, this one's also divided by six, and then it's divided by two, and then two more sixes. I wish that I could explain all the math behind this, but honestly, I mean, when I was figuring out how to draw the hexagon originally, I just kind of looked up online how to calculate the the each vertex of a hexagon, and I kind of went from there. So um, these are multiplied. I think that's right for the x values, and then the y values are something very similar. Two, six, 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 and six. So, and then we have to multiply kind of the same thing. So 11 times that, uh, 3 times that, 5, oh, 7 times that, and then 5. Okay, so let's just do it. 
Let's see what happened. Unclosed. Oh, I need an extra parenthesis on every one of these, I guess. Because we're kind of forming a, we're not just passing in like one value and one value. We've actually enclosed these in parentheses so that we form a tuple. Okay. Pretty cool. So we have the hexagons. You can see that they're drawing. Let me make them a little bit bigger so that we can see. So let's say 30. Okay. So we've made them larger, but they're still overlapping. And that's because our SEP X and SEP Y is still hard coded to just 20. So now our hexagons are larger than the SEP X and SEP Y. So we need to change those to build off of the hex size. So I'm going to change the SEP X to 3 times hex size. And then I'm just going to run this just so we can see. So you can see we've got a, a good amount of separation there. And then this is going to be 0.86 times hex size. Hex size. Okay, pretty good. And the reason, so you'll kind of see that that's not perfect. They're still overlapping. But that's because when we want to make this grid, we need these hexagons on every other row to slide over to fit in this space with the hexagon. So when we come down here, so we're drawing the hexagons, we're drawing them in the grid, everything looks great. But the thing that we need to do is whenever we're on an odd, well, it doesn't really matter, but we'll say if I mod 2, I don't like that, mod 2 equals 0. So if we're on an even row, I guess we should say, uh, you divide by 2, there's no remainder, it's even. We'll say current x plus equals. So we're, we're setting the x to 3 times x size. So if we want to move it over like a half row, then we would say plus equals 1.5 times uh, x size. And now if we run this, boom. We have a hexagon grid. I think it looks really good. We'll just move this back down to 10. Okay, pretty sweet. So we just did a little bit of math. This math, I mean, I, there's nothing to really figure out here. That's just the math behind drawing the each vertex of a hexagon. These numbers right here, I just kind of found on my own. I just kept playing with it because there, there was some guidelines around creating a grid of hexagons, but it just got really complicated. So I just started messing with these values and I found out for whatever reason 0.86 works pretty well and it may not be perfect but I think honestly I think it looks really good so if you wanted to create a map you know we don't maybe you want this border maybe you don't but we just increase the size of this we say 1.1 1.1 and then just by doing that now we're kind of outside the the full canvas and we've got a little bit more happening so uh, so that's the basic. I mean, that's that's a large part of it. If we wanted to make a map or, or make something cool, uh, not even a map, but just some cool art with this hexagon tiling, that's pretty helpful. Uh, and all we're really doing is drawing a grid of hexagons. Just to give a, a little primer on the future, and you could probably take this and you could run with it. Uh, when we create the shape, we're saying no fill here, but we could fill. We could fill each hexagon. So what if we said, before we draw the shape, we say fill... Uh, random uh, 0 to 255 and then we give it an opac well no opacity so we're we're filling with a random random color between black it's going to be a random black between black and white so a, a grayscale value so that's random uh, you've probably seen this before in some other tutorials where you just kind of start off random and now we want to kind of construct it around something you know we, we don't know exactly how to format this randomly but we can apply so what if we said random what if we said feel noise and this is the Perlin noise that I've talked about in the past x times 0 0.02 y times 0 0.02 so we get this noise value remember that this gives us a value between 0 and 1 so we multiply that by 255 and then there you go so now we're generating this elevation uh, and we have the hexagon grid. We've got this black and white Perlin noise happening. Very basic. I mean, that's how you kind of start with everything with elevation. And then you make it more complicated over time. But uh, you can kind of see the, the groundwork there. Uh, I do want to continue this as a short little series. I want to keep this video pretty short as well. But I think it'll be cool to just kind of walk through creating something like this in p5.js so that you can see some other libraries. I started using dat dot gui 
and that's pretty cool for creating these these interactive tools so uh, you're kind of bridging the gap between just creating something for the sake of creating it and making it where other people can use it as well uh, and i think that's really cool so thanks for watching this video if there are things that you want to see in the future or any questions that you have make sure you leave a comment down below remember to hit the subscribe button uh, i hope everyone's staying safe in the midst of all that's happening in the world right now and hopefully we'll all pull through it pretty soon thank you again for watching